So the start of the journey to trace Alfred's short life begins in 1896 um, and research using ancestry.co.uk has found Alfred Martin in as a baptism date of 19th of March 1896. This would suggest that he was born in the first three months of um, 1896 we're unable to find any evidence of um, his actual birth date, but we have his baptism date of the 19th of March, 1896. And we can see here his father, Arthur Martin, and mother, Louisa Martin. The next place we looked was at the 1901 census, uh, and we find the family now living at 112 Sable Road in Smethwick. And we can see here, we've got Arthur Martin, who's the head of the family. This is my great-grandfather, Alfred's father. He was 40 years old, and he was a canal boatman. Then we have Louisa, Alfred's mother, my great-grandmother. She was 34. And then we find the rest of the family, Charles, his brother, his older brother, who was 12 years old at the time. Emily, his sister, she was seven years old. Here we see Alfred at five years old. Ellen, his sister, three years old. And Alice, his sister, at two months old. So there were the family. Alfred is a very young child, five-year-old child, in 1901. Next we move to the 1911 census, and we find the family now. The head of the family is Mr Martin, and the address is 57 Sable Road, Smethwick. And here we find the family on the census. We've got Arthur. The head, who is still a boatman, Louisa, um, Arthur's now 52, Louisa's 45, and we find Charles is now 22 years old, and Charles is a uh, nut cutter, and we find Emily, she's now 18 years old. And she's a nut frager. And here's Alfred. He's now 15 years old. Single. And he's a brass cutter. That's a chandelier maker. And then we find Ellen. 12 years old. Alice, 10 years old. And an additional three siblings now. So we've got Ernest, who's eight. Frederick, who's six, and Violet, who's four years old. So that was the family living at 57 Sable Road in 1911. And here is my great-grandfather's signature. And that's his handwriting. So that's Alfred's father's handwriting. Interestingly, when doing this research, I discovered that next door at 59 Sable Road, uh, there's Mr. Duckworth. Mr. Duckworth is my grandfather. And so the next door neighbours, number 59 Sable Road, we have John Duckworth, who's the head. That's, he's 27, my grandfather. And we have Sarah Duckworth, my grandmother. She's 24 years old. Now Sarah is the, we have to thank for keeping Alfred's name alive for us to do this research now and, and tell his story. Um, because she kept the letters that were received by her parents and Alfred's parents informing them of his, of his death. And then we can see that living with John and Sarah, my grandparents are my auntie and uncle, or two of my auntie and uncles, 
Louisa Duckworth and Leonard John Duckworth. And there we have it. We've found Alfred in 1911, 15 years old. And within the next three years, three years time, he'll be departing to go to war and he will never return to his family. This is uh, Devonshire Road in Smethwick. Uh, just off to the left and here shortly is Sable Road. And Sable Road is where Alfred uh, was born and grew up until he went to uh, until he went to war as a teenager. So this road here on the left is Sable Road. And the first place that he uh, there's evidence of him living was at number 112. Now 112 no longer exists and it was here on the left where these newer houses are. I think it was destroyed during World War II, the area was bombed and it's where this first house is on 108, that's where 112 would have been and that was in 1901 when he was five years old. So if we carry on down, the next house we should come across on the right of where he was in 1911. So this one fifty nine here is where my grandmother lived and fifty seven there is where they lived. So that's where he would have left to go to war. That's where he was in 1911. So carrying on down Sable Road now. The road that we're about to the junction is with Smethwick High Street. Now this would have been the centre of, uh, of everything in Smethwick at the time. The far side is uh, were all shops, and uh, yeah, this would have been the heart of the community, Smedic High Street. Any of these buildings, well, all of these buildings would have been there at the time. And we're coming down to a, a landmark that he would have been familiar with. On the left hand side was Smethwick Toll Gate. There was a toll here, the Blue Gates they were called, hence that pub is named after them, and that was the toll house. So he would have known that, he would have seen that, and he would have walked along this road. Very different community now, very strong Sikh community now in Smethwick, this part of Smethwick in particular. And there on the left is a uh, monument to a Sikh soldier in the First World War. Over there is Smethwick Rolf Street Station, the Rolf Street uh, station building has uh, remained pretty much unchanged. Yes, yeah, so Smethwick Rolf Street Station on the right here, this may be, may well be where he, uh, he left to catch a train to go to Cambridge. Uh, where he was first um, called up to. 
This Smedic Roll Street would have been a hive of uh, industrial activity around the time. The public baths were on the right here. The fire station on the left here. Um, thriving pubs community. All now, all now gone. Here was the where the fire station was, just here on the left, just there. Um, all now gone. Very derelict. And uh, where I'm heading to now, it, it's during whilst he was uh, away at war between 1911 and 1918. His mom and dad and uh, his younger siblings would have moved, or did move, to uh, another part of Smethwick, uh, which we're heading to now. And they moved to this road, Sydenham Road, to Arthur and Louise and Martin, and their, their, their children, they moved to, uh, to Sydenham Road here, uh, specifically to number 98 which is down here on the left move to number 98 here it is on the left here and they moved there and it's uh, to, to that house that they would have received Two letters around about May, towards the end of May, maybe early June 1918. And one of those letters is from an army matron, Matron Williams. There it is, number 98. Um, informing them of his death, and then subsequently. A further letter would have arrived from an army chaplain um, sympathising with the loss. And just to ride past again on final time, just the thought that the current inhabitants of that home and the subsequent generations who have inhabited it before would have no knowledge or awareness of the sadness that would have arrived through the letterbox to that house in 1918, 125, 105 years ago. And there it is. This is the first letter written following Alfred's death and it is written by an army chaplain. The address on the letter is the 14th General Hospital BE7 and the date on the letter is the 8th of May 1918. The letter reads as follows. Dear Mr Martin, I am writing these few lines to express my sympathy with you in the loss of your son, Private A. Martin. 81671, who died in this hospital at 10.5am on 8th of May, 18. You may rest assured that everything possible was done in our power, and that whilst he was here, he was surrounded by every comfort and kindness. He will be buried in Boulogne Cemetery. His grave will be marked by a cross bearing his name. It will be carefully looked after. Your son has made the supreme, supreme sacrifice. We may not doubt his reward. Yours is the great loss. I pray you may be somewhat comforted by the reassurance that he did his duty nobly, gave his life in spent righteous cause. Yours sincerely, C. R. Harding, Chaplain. This is the second letter that was received by my great-grandparents and this is from an army matron. 
The address is as follows. Number 14 Field Hospital, BE7, France. And the letter is dated the 9th of May, 1918. The letter reads as follows. Dear Mr. Martin, it is with great regret I write to tell you that your son, Fitter A. Martin, 81671 Royal Field Artillery, died yesterday morning, Wednesday the 8th of May, 18. You will know by my first letter written on the 1st of May, 18, that he was suffering from the effects of gas poisoning. The night of the 7th of May, 18, he became much worse and passed away 10.30 a.m. the following morning. I'm very, very sorry. I know how much he had looked forward to getting home. Only two hours before he died, he spoke of it and said, the French money he had, he would change a Victoria station. I don't think he suffered much. It was just that his heart could not stand the strain due to his general condition. Any belongings that your son may have had by him at the time of his death will be forwarded to you through the official channels. You will get them in due course. With very much sympathy at the loss of a fine son, I am very, truly yours, M.S. Williams, Army Matron. Having the name of the field hospital from the address on the letters um, written to Alfred's parents, um, I carried out some research and um, came upon some photographs from online searches of number 14 um, field hospital in Wimmeroo. Um, there are four photographs that I managed to, to identify. And the first one being the entrance to the hospital. So we can see here the, uh, the photograph with the label um, identifying it as the entrance to number 14 field hospital. Uh, the next photograph um, is a photograph of a ward within the hospital. Um, this may well be the ward where Alfred was um, treated uh, and ultimately um, died. Uh, if it wasn't this ward, I would imagine that it would be a very similar ward. Um, and we could see how neat and um, it seems to be a, a, a comfortable location, um, judging by the pictures. Um, the next picture we managed to, to find is a picture of the staff, um, the officers and nurses and matrons um, that were looked in charge of this hospital. Uh, and over on the left, um, there appears to be an officer who's wearing a dog collar. Um, so potentially this is the gentleman, the chaplain, that um, wrote the letter to um, Alfred's parents, um, offering them some words of sympathy and advising them what was going to happen to, uh, to Alfred in terms of... Uh, where he was going to be buried and how his grave was going to be marked. So th this could be the chaplain that wrote that letter. Zooming into the center of this photograph, we can see uh, the matron um, look, who, look, uh, who was in charge of this hospital, um, Matron Williams. Um, this, I believe, is the, is the matron who wrote the two letters, one um, informing Alfred's parents that he'd been injured and the second one informing them of his death. Um, and the reason that I believe this is Matron Williams, if we look at this next picture, which uh, has her name um, at the bottom of the picture, um, it's, I would imagine it would be very unlikely that there would be two matrons at this hospital um, with the surname Williams. 
So I, I think we can um, assess with some certainty that this is the lady who was caring for Alfred and who wrote the letters to his parents, um, advising them of his, um, his injuries and then ultimately advising them that he died. Um, this may well have been one of the last people that Alfred saw before he died. And uh, I think it's quite fitting that uh, we may now have had the opportunity to see some of the people that were there who cared for him and ultimately um, supported him um, in his final days. <laughs>